Hello and welcome to Space Shark Teaches. I'm Sean from Space Shark Studios and I'm here to teach you GD Script in Godot 3.1. Let's get started. In this lesson, we're going to teach you how to add your own images in for the ball on the platform, as well as use actions, conditional statements, and keyboard input in order to get your ball to move. So first off, we're going to add some new images to our game because these little Godot faces are getting kind of old. So first off, let's make a new folder for them called Sprites. So you're going to right click on the res folder, go to new folder and call it Sprites. So now that we have a Sprites folder, it's time to add some images to it. We're going to do that by taking these images that I have linked to in the description of this video, downloading them, and then dragging them into the Sprites folder. You can go ahead and drag that little icon down in here too. So one thing very important to remember, since we're working in 2D and most of my work is going to be Sprite work, um, you have to import it correctly. So it just does a default import, which is not good for pixel art because it is going to stretch into form and blur. So what we want to do is select it, go to import, hit presets and 2D pixel. Go ahead and re-import. Do that for all of these. And I can show you in a second why it's important to do that. So for example, if we go into the ball and we say, okay, for the sprite, I want our player. Our player looks like this right now. Make him bigger, he still looks good. However, if I go in here and say, I want regular 2D, actually turn all this back on and re-import, it gets all blurry. They lost all that nice definition. So we really want to do full on 2D. Now with that said, we actually want to swap out the basketball. Now it's way too big, so let's go ahead and shrink that down. In fact, let's make it smaller than it was before because we are making a basketball and it just looked too big. So now we have a basketball. You can play it and it looks okay. There's something weird going on, but for the most part, that's fine. Oh yeah, that's why. So now we have a basketball and now we can do the same thing with our platforms. So our platforms right now are really stretched out, nasty looking. So we're going to drag this in and we're gonna say, okay, let's keep some semblance of the original shape and just stretch it longer. And we can make this shorter. So now over here in main, you can see it also made all of that shorter. Hooray, we're done. All right, so the new art is in. You can go and make whatever art you want. I think I used 16 by 16 pixels for all of this because it's very easy to get quick pixel art up and running at that size. But now we get to go to the fun part, which is the script. So right now, we are using set axis velocity, we had a print, yada, yada, yada. What we actually want to do now is we are not going to be using the set axis velocity anymore. We are going to be using something similar to this imply impulse, which is actually apply central impulse. So this takes care of this vector two zero zero there. So what we want to do is apply speed. Remove all that. And now we are going to add a conditional statement called an if. So right now we're going to say if true, then whatever is under this line and indented, do that. So you'll see this means that nothing changes. Well, except for the fact that this runs way too fast because both of these are running. Let's do something like this. 
since it's applying that force every frame. There we go. So it's like someone kicking a ball repeatedly over and over again, 60 times a second, a little bit. We don't want that. So we can turn that to false. And now, remember this will only run if whatever here is true. So it doesn't run. You can basically think of this as saying, if false equals equals true. That's gonna say no, but if true equals equals, and this comparator, this double equals, means if the left side is truly equals to the right side, as opposed to if I say var a equals five, which means a's value is five. So with all of that out of the way, we are actually going to test to see if the player's input And there's a lot of stuff here. Um, it is called is just pressed. So you can actually see is action. So there's is action pressed, which means is currently held down. Is just pressed, which means it was just pressed. This will only be true once. Once that's done, it's gone forever. And then is action just released, which is what's it just released. Once it's done, that's it. It presses or it releases once. So we're going to say just pressed because we only want it to go to the right once per time we hit the right button. And then here are all of your different options. So these all correspond with very basic buttons on your keyboard. So up, down, left, right are your keyboard arrows. So we're going to use UI right. So now this says, if we just pressed the right key, the right arrow key, apply an impulse that is of size speed to the center of the object. Let's see what happens. So you can see every time I press it, it kicks it a bit. If I go ahead and switch these back to say something like negative 50, five, and this something like 50, let's change this to negative 100. There we go. And that's it. You now have control over your game with your keyboard with just a little bit of code. That was it. You added one line of code. And the next video, next lesson, we are going to be using that same code to start controlling your player character. Thank you for watching Space Shark Teaches. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel and remember to click the bell to always stay up to date. Please also join us on our Discord, linked in the comments, and check out our other videos if you ever want to see what else we've been up to. Thanks again for watching, and we can't wait to see what you make.